this is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Welcome to the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History. I'm Lucky Severson. The first synthetic plastic ever was produced about 1909 in this cast iron machine called a bakelizer. Workers at the plant dubbed it Old Faithful. It was a remarkable invention that changed our lives. But now an inventor claims to have blended a plastic that can actually withstand the heat of a nuclear explosion. And incredibly, tests so far indicate he may be onto something. It's Maurice Ward's day off. He finds harness racing a great escape from his work. And when you understand the nature of that work, you will understand why he needs to escape. You see, this backyard inventor may have mixed up one of the most exciting scientific discoveries of the century. It's called Starlight Polymer, and it has the world scientific community a buzz. What it is, is a plastic its inventor claims can withstand the heat of a nuclear explosion. Those tests were a little difficult to replicate in Maurice Ward's cluttered garage, but the principle checks out. When treated, this piece of honeycombed Kevlar becomes a fire barrier. The temperature of the torch is about 1,200 degrees Celsius. Starlight's actually contained 10,000 degrees centigrade, rather like uh, sitting with your bum on the surface of the sun. Outside, the untreated end of the material is torched. You have to come put your hand in that. Without the starlight polymer, not only does it burn, it also gives off toxic fumes. It is really quite a remarkable material. And when people actually say that um, they don't believe it, that sort of skepticism is almost... I, I was in that position myself. I needed the evidence of these tests. And it certainly is the case that these tests have shown that there is no parallel material at the moment. Sir Ronald Mason is the former chief scientific advisor to Britain's Ministry of Defense. I have helped to design further tests of Starlight, which have been carried out both in the UK and the US by independent scientists, and have established basically that it is a very good fire barrier, it's a good thermal barrier, it offers protection against uh, ionizing radiation, laser radiation. His tests may seem crude, but Starlight has baffled some of the best in the business. At the Atomic Weapons Establishment in England, this nondescript white substance withstood simulated nuclear flashes, generating temperatures of around 10,000 degrees. NATO scientists at White Sands, New Mexico, have also reportedly produced startling results. Even more remarkable, Starlight was created by a man with no scientific background. That remains an absolute mystery. Um, Morris has no scientific training. He actually is given to talking scientific nonsense. I actually believe that um, chemistry is often, you know, uh, the resort of a cook. Well, in this case, a hairdresser. Maurice Ward's talents were first apparent in an English salon. Then he became interested in recycling and went from perms to polymers. But it was a tragedy that led him to starlight. Fifty-four people died when this plane caught fire while taking off from Manchester Airport in August 1985. When he saw the images, Maurice Ward committed himself to discovering a fire retardant that works. I was aware of uh, things in the marketplace, but we'd not had any dealings with them at all. And when I started to look at them, I found they really were just the same as um, the things that have been used in the aircraft, which of course cause the, the really halogens, which cause uh, toxic fumes and smoke in a fire situation. And so Maurice began blending. Amazingly, it took only a couple of months before he knew he was on to something. That's what I was quite fortunate. 
but I, I've based it on uh, polymers and the blending, a little bit to do with my knowledge of the technical side, but I actually um, probably got the right ingredients together with the right conditions. Starlight is about a mixture of 20 different compounds, and we certainly do not know how each of those compounds contribute to the working of starlight. So it must be intuition, it must be shrewdness, it must be judgment, and it must be nose. Maurice revealed his new wonder substance on British television with this simple but effective egg test. Unprotected, the egg cooked and cracked in seconds. But when coated with starlight, it was a different story. So I'm going to put the torch on it now. You see it's reacting similarly to the way with the other sample. That looks nice and red. As though it's hot. So we take the torch away and put my fingers on there. It's absolutely cold. I will now take the egg there and crack it open. As impressive as it was, Maurice was dismissed as a crackpot. I believe that there are uh, some of the uh, Doctor Who's and professors that probably believed, uh, or that was their belief, because they couldn't uh, imagine the results which we'd achieved. Uh, but uh, really, um, the phrase that I now use is that they hadn't had the pleasure of meeting me or the privilege of seeing Starlight at work. He receives dozens of letters each day from major corporations and defense departments around the world, interested in what could be a multi-million dollar deal, because Starlight could be useful for just about anything. I've got one coming along for the home where it can be just be sprayed onto carpets or furniture, which will hopefully uh, give protection. I mean, every day of the week you read a family is being burnt uh, because the furniture is flammable. On the other extreme, then we're on about space, and obviously there are military applications. But I would stress that I'm interested really in prevention and protection, and not in causing devastation. The important thing to emphasise: I was asked, isn't this another cold fusion? You know experiment whereby people claimed results for fusion. The answer is no, because the people who claimed the cold fusion results were the people who did the experiments themselves. These experiments have been carried out totally independently. It's all moving very quickly for the former Yorkshire hairdresser. While he readily admits he doesn't know exactly how starlight works, neither do the scientists. For the time being, Maurice Ward is happy to let the skeptics, and there are plenty, look to the results. If you were wondering, like we were, where the name Starlight came from, it's from Maurice Ward's granddaughter. Kids always come up with better names for things.